Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel that is Biochemistry Basics by Dr. Amit. Um, today we are going to start rapid revision series of biochemistry and the first topic in the rapid revision series is urea cycle. Now this urea cycle is also known as the ornithin cycle as well as the krebs henselite cycle. Why it is known as the ornithin cycle? Because ornithin which is utilized in the second step of the urea cycle, it gets synthesized at the end of the urea cycle. This urea cycle was discovered by Hans Krebs and its assistant henselite. That's why it is known as the krebs henselite cycle. Now, definition and significance of urea cycle. Urea cycle is the cyclical pathway in which toxic ammonia is converted into the non-toxic urea in the liver and this urea is excreted in the urine. That is the definition and significance of urea cycle and the urea which is synthesized at the end of the urea cycle is the important marker for the assessment of the renal function. It is the important test included in the renal function test and the normal level of blood urea is 15 to 45 milligram per deciliter and this urea level is increased in various kidney diseases. Now site of the urea cycle as I have mentioned that it occurs in the liver and the location of the urea cycle is it is partially mitochondrial and partially cytosolic. The first two reactions occur in the mitochondria while remaining steps occur in the cytosol. Now what are the sources of atoms of urea? So Carbon and oxygen comes from the carbon dioxide, one nitrogen comes from the free ammonia and one nitrogen comes from the aspartate. So that are the sources of atoms. Now let's see the main reaction. This is the main reaction. I am not going in the detail of main reaction. For the main reaction, you can visit the uh, video on urea cycle. Link for the same is given in the description box. The only important thing which I will mention over here is the rate limiting enzyme of the urea cycle. That is the step catalyzed by the CPS1 which is the first step in the urea cycle. CPS1 is the carbamyl phosphate synthetase 1 that is the conversion of ammonia and carbon dioxide into the carbamyl phosphate and this CPS1 is different from the CPS2. CPS2 is the enzyme required for the limited metabolism. Another difference between CPS1 and CPS2 is the CPS1 is the enzyme located in the mitochondria while CPS2 is located in the cytosol. Another important thing related to the urea cycle is the fumarate which is synthesized at the end of the fourth reaction. This fumarate is the link between urea cycle and TCA cycle. That's why urea cycle is also known as the urea bicycle. And the complete reaction can be summarized as a aspartate ammonia and carbon dioxide gets converted to the urea fumarate. Fine. And in this particular urea cycle, there is a utilization of four molecules of ATP. Fine. So that is the summary of the complete reaction. Now let's talk about the regulation part of the urea cycle. So urea cycle is regulated by two means. One is the long term control and another is the short term control. In the long term control there is an increased synthesis of urea cycle enzymes and this long term control particularly occurs whenever you are taking high protein diet and in case of starvation. The short term control occurs by allosteric stimulation of this rate limiting enzyme that is CPS1 which is done by the n glutamate. And the n glutamate, increased synthesis of n glutamate occurs whenever you are taking high protein diet and by alcohol. That is about the regulation of urea cycle. So that is all about urea cycle. Thank you for watching. Please like, share and subscribe Biochemistry Basics by Dr. Amit. And don't forget to press the bell icon so you can get all the notifications from it. Thank you.